Guys, what's up? It is Doug, and this is our first ever vehicle review here on the channel. Hope you guys like it. We are here today with the Axial SMT-10, the brand new version for 2020. All right, here's what you're going to get when you open the box. You can see here you've got your radio, the truck that's in cardboard, some other goodies that come with it, uh, pretty much the standard stuff. All right, guys, here it is actually out of the box. This is the Grave Digger. You can see here it's got those great decals on the side, great bodywork. I love the... U.S. Hot Rod Association, the old school logo on it. R.I.P. Love that. Um, difference here from the, the uh, old SMT-10, for you guys familiar, it's a new servo. Really interested to see how this performs. So this truck, the uh, Axial SMT-10, this is the 2020 version of it. Brief history on it, though. It came out, the original one, in 2016 as a Grave Digger and a Max-D. And uh, super, super popular truck. It uses a lot of the axial wraith components and other axial components as well. The truck is one of the things responsible for the solid axle monster truck boom that happened. Again, when it came out in 2016, the market was ready for it and people started modding these. I myself have owned three of them and I've put together parts on many, many more. They're great platforms, the old one was at least. So let's see how this one is out of the box. Enough chit chat for me, let's get to running it. So there's a lot to like with the new SMT-10. So the first thing that jumped out at all of us here when we were driving it is how much of an improvement the new electronics are versus the ones that came in the old ready to run that came out years ago. The 550 size can motor is quite a bit peppier than the old Axial 27 turn. And the biggest thing is the new ESC. The Dynamite ESC has no drag brake, which is fantastic because the old one, the AE5 that came in the original, had at a minimum 50% drag brake or 100% drag brake. So this new one is just a lot smoother, it's a lot easier to drive, and most importantly, a lot more fun. And by the way, the ESC is rated for two cell, not for three cell LiPo, so just FYI, we were running on two cell the whole time here. The truck's plenty peppy, as you can see here, you can make some nice jumps, some nice launches. Truck handles pretty decently, it would be nice if it had a sway bar in the front, we will talk about that more in the next section. But it does handle fairly well. I mean, it feels like a solid axle monster truck, right? Again, this is like the old SMT-10. If you drove that, you know what you're getting in for. It's just a lot smoother and a lot more usable, if that makes sense, you know, right out of the box because of the better electronics. The servo, we should also say, that is updated and it feels updated. This servo feels nicer than the old tactic unit that came in the old ready to run. That would have a tendency to where the wheels could kind of push the servo. That really hasn't been the case here. Uh, it, it works well. Yes, it's a ready to run servo. It can be a little on the slower side if you're used to a racier servo, but still, it's a nice unit. It's a good time to segue into the radio talk here. So this is the pistol grip that it comes with. Standard Spectrum ready to run radio. It's fine, it does the job. Uh, it would be nice if it had a foam grip on it or a rubber grip or something, it just has plastic, but it does have some good adjustments on it that you can make. And that's important because with that servo, we found we had to turn down the steering rate, otherwise, it would go too far and the axles would rub with the tire under hard cornering. So once we turned that down, it was good though. And then you could get the most out of your cornering without the rubbing, at least very little rubbing. I mean, still a ready to run servo is gonna have a little bit of play in it, but still it was nice having that adjustment and the servo works well with the radio because of that. So one of the things we really like about the new SMT-10 is the transmission, which now features all metal gears. Yes, the old one had plastic gears and had a propensity to strip out, especially when you started putting bigger power or bigger tires. Uh, that would always happen, it seems like. And so you had to do that. It was like a mandatory upgrade whenever you were ready to modify your SMT-10. Now you don't have to do that. This transmission works great, it works smooth. As for durability, I mean, it's an Axial SMT-10. Not much has changed on that part of the construction as far as like the chassis and components go. Uh, but it's nice. I mean, again, we've got a lot of experience with these. They've, they've proven to be pretty tough trucks and they're very easy to upgrade to. I mean, if you, you, know, you bust a knuckle, or a rear lockout or something, you can easily replace it with plastic if you want for cheap, or you can of course upgrade with various aluminum, uh, different metals, all kinds of different options out there on the aftermarket of the Axle SMT-10 for anything you would break or want to upgrade. So we do find it though that this test unit has been a, a really durable truck and we're excited to modify it from here. The last thing here is the tire. So it comes with a 2.2 size Axial BKT tire. And this really isn't ideal for RC monster truck racing, but for bashing, it's totally fine. This compound, for whatever reason, feels a little bit softer than the ready to run from last time, but that could be the same compound. It just might have mold variants or whatever. That's just kind of what the deal is whenever these tires are done in batches like this. So I don't know that the compound has really changed much, but it does feel a little bit softer. However, what most are going to do is put the bigger uh, regular solid axle style monster truck tires 
on these things, like Cloudbuster size. So check this out. This is what it looks like before you put some J Concepts Renegades and Tribute wheels on it. And here it is after, it looks great. It, it accepts these wheels and tires just fine. You can see here, here's a front comparison where you can see what it looks like with the, uh, the BKT on it and then the J Concepts Renegade. The Renegade's way wider. It really improves your stance. And uh, you can see here we ran it for a while with those bigger tires on it. And just so you can have a little info on that, it, it does accept the wheels and tires very easy. It actually makes it stable, more stable to run. Uh, and under that stock power, you're fine. The servo handled the bigger wheels and tires with a little more strain, but that, that stock servo was still fine for it. The biggest thing that we found out you want to watch if you're going to run bigger wheels and tires with the stock electronics is your heat. It's going to generate more heat. I mean, when we ran around just kind of doing a, a basic freestyle, it was starting to get warm on those bigger tires. And we were running the stock 14 tooth, pinion that it comes with. It also comes with the 16 tooth. If you're going to run the bigger tires, we recommend that you do not gear up or you're going to burn that motor up that's going to happen if you're running bigger tires like that and even if you stay with the stock gearing and you run the little bit bigger tires you're just going to want to be mindful of your temperatures you can do it but just watch where your temperatures are at and by watching temperatures you don't need a thermometer if it's too hot to touch for more than a second on your finger you need to let it cool off again before you run it anymore so just fyi be mindful of those temperatures but you can run the bigger wheels and tires no problem and we need to talk about the price of the truck here because at 299 we really like that. We feel that you're getting substantial value here because the old one retailed for $399 and that was pushing it with some of the changes you needed to make on it, especially like the old ESC and all that. This one comes in at $100 cheaper and has upgraded features from the old one. And we feel that that's, again, it's just a great value at $299. You can have fun with this thing without modding anything if you're a newbie or you just want to mess around with a solid axle monster truck to see what it's like. Or of course, it's a great platform to start you know, modding everything on the truck if you want with to really get it crazy like some of our trucks that we raise with are Pro Modifieds. And again, though, for $299, you are not going to have to junk a bunch of components or, or get rid of a bunch of the stuff. You can have fun with it right off the bat. And uh, that transmission alone used to be a, an upgrade that you know would cost you, I don't know, $50, $75, or something around there. You don't have to do that anymore. So again, great job by Horizon and Axial for offering this thing at under $299 ready to run. That's a great deal for us. Our main gripe with this is that there's still a lack of a front sway bar that comes with the truck. You can see here running out on a high bite surface like the cement. Uh, we're letting off the throttle here as the truck's going around the corner, but you can see when you hard corner with it, without that front sway bar, it wants to dive in and it wants to flip over. Now, if you're curious what a front sway bar does, we actually just did a Trigger King Tech video on the subject you want to check out, but you definitely need a front sway bar on it because otherwise it just, it gets a little bit too rolly and any kind of speed under a, a high bite surface, you're going to dive and you're going to roll the truck over. It's just, it's just going to want to do that. Luckily there are a bunch of sway bars on the market you can easily fix this with. Axel has their own, plenty of aftermarket stuff too. So it would be nice to see it fixed. The other main complaints we had, I addressed in the last section when talking about, you know, that the system can get a little bit toasty, the electronics that is. Uh, it'd be nice if the truck had bigger tires versus those smaller 2.2 BKTs, you know, right out of the box. Again, I've kind of talked about those points though. So yeah, that's really it complaint wise. We feel like for $299, you are getting a lot of truck for the money and then it's a really good update. Final thoughts on the SMT 10 re-release here, guys. Very solid. The Trigger King crew recommends it. We've all been driving this here all day today. In some of the footage, it's been various drivers. Everybody's been thrashing on it. Really impressed. This is what the SMT10 should have been like. Is it perfect? No. Uh, you know, of course, it needs a front sway bar. You can take care of that. It really needs bigger tires as well to really monster truck, you know, monsterize it. Uh, but the servo on it is nice, uh, at least for a ready to run. I think it's an improvement over the old one. And the motor and ESC are much improved over the old one. So. Definitely recommend this, especially for the newbie solid axle monster truck guy. Go with the RTR. If you have stuff already or you you know, you know really want to trick it out, go with the builder's kit. Start with the raw builder's kit. That's what you'd want to go with. But either of them are solid guys. The SMT10 makes for a great platform. And you are going to see us mod this in the future. The plan that we have for this truck is actually to turn this into a Trigger King rental ride for when people come out to uh, you know our races and they don't have a truck, they can run this. So you're gonna see what that is. We don't have all the plans yet on it, but you will see us hop this thing up. I do know we're gonna dye the cage on it though. We're gonna dye it black so we can do whatever we want with the paint scheme. You know, the neon green does kind of limit you on paint schemes, but um, yeah, you will see this truck 
talked about in future videos. So thank you guys very much for watching. And again, the re-release of the Axial SMT-10 gets a big thumbs up. Let us know in the comments, what do you think of the Axial SMT-10 re-release? If you've got one below or if you've had some experience with one, and we will see you very soon.